back to another episode of the Rap and Wrestle Podcast. You guys know me. My name is Derek. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Rap and Wrestle. Make sure you check us out on Apple Podcasts and YouTube, at Rap and Wrestle as well. Today is a special day. Got a very talented young man with me here, Laron Pierce, coming straight from the West Coast, from Cali. What's good with you, bro? Man, chilling like a villain, man. Salute to you, brother, man. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. You know, we always uh, we always chit chat on uh, Instagram when it's ever something with wrestling and music. So you know, definitely, oh, yeah. I wanted to uh, you know get you on and you know talk about you know your music career, the things you're doing, and yes. you know how that all ties in. Oh yeah, most definitely. Let's get into it, man. Definitely, man. Uh, so for you, you know, one thing I want I want to get into the music and uh, you know wrestling and all that. But you know, one thing I saw, I saw um, you have uh, the only hip hop show that I thought oh, yeah. was very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just kind of like tell people like how did that get started and like what's your whole purpose behind starting it? Oh man, um, the only hip hop show was started around December 16, 2014. Mm -hmm. um, I was at a radio station called Roscoe's Media Center. You, I don't know if you're familiar with Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Yeah. They just, yeah, they just celebrate 46 years of, of business. So they, they've been, so they've been on since 1975. Mm -hmm. So January was their their day to start a business. Um, um, also, I don't really tell people this, but my uncle is the owner of the company. So he oh, always, wow. he was the one that created the yeah he was the only one that created it and and it's been successful so far and brought my father on and and I became a part of it in some way you know I worked there for almost like six years or something like that so mm -hmm. but um yeah so at the time my mentor um, Johnny Morris I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the poetess who was the first signee of um, first female artist to get signed at Interscope. Yeah. Um, that's, um, John, that's, that's his daughter. And um, I'm working under her now as far as Morris Media Studios goes. Mm -hmm. But at Morris uh, RMC at the time, Johnny Morris was the manager at the time. And he asked me, well, while I was working on these other shows, and I was like, I think it would be a good idea you could do a show here. And I'm like, you family, man. You you can do whatever you want, man. Like something like that. So, and I was like, you know what? I wanted to call it the hip hop show. Yeah. And uh, I brought in um, Alric, who was a DJ at the time. I don't know what he's doing nowadays, but he was my first guest. And mm -hmm. it was just playing music, just vibing, just to see how things go. And um, I um, invited, and then um, I had the, the Prince of LA. I don't know if you heard, of, I don't know if anybody knows about the Prince of LA. Um, he had a radio show called the Prince of LA show and he was known as Arches Westbred at the time. And, um, they were on the guest, um, him and his mom, which was a game they actually were part of the show at the time. So they, I invited them to be on the show like a couple of times mm -hmm. and I invited Veda and Veda is a rapper that, that inspired me a lot because he was a former gang member himself mm -hmm. and, um, now he's a minister. And he actually introduced me to a guy named Dane Diesel during the show because he was the first guest on the show of 2015. And that's yeah. when I started off there. And then Dane Diesel um, came on the next show and I invited Sean August, who is an also an artist as well that has, an, has a podcast called God Talk Radio. And he was on, then he brought in um, Rashard Smith, better known as Rachel Fallon. And mm -hmm. And it's funny because I actually had the, the Instagram posts and like social media wise, I just called it the only hip hop show. Uh -huh. There was this logo called the only hip hop show. I was like, no, it's just the hip hop show. But then everybody's been calling it the only hip hop show. Then we just name it and we changed the logo and everything. We just call it the only hip hop show ever since. So it was my creation and uh, I, um, I don't own it yet, but I will own it soon. But I own the yeah. domain for the website. And um, we just actually did a show a week ago. I mean, you know, we got co-hosts like comes and goes, you know what I mean? So I have two mm -hmm. co uh, female co-hosts with me. Um, one of them is Khadija Allen, better known as Finance KK, and then um, Aisha Nubian. 
they're actually our main co-host of the show. And, um, and we actually, we started um, back again, cause we actually had like ups and downs and we have like other stuff going on. And because of COVID, we actually stopped that, the show. But it was because of me, cause I was ducked all the Vegas left and right, trying to get my mind right at the time. And yeah. I brought it, I brought the show back based on the anniversary. So we celebrated six years of the only hip hop show. Oh uh, man. Last year. Yeah. And, um, and we just actually did a show last week, last Sunday, and we had uh, MNS Dank on. He was, see, the only reason why I would create, uh, create this platform so people can tell their story. It didn't yeah. matter if you were a celebrity or whatnot. And in this case, MNS Dank was the guest on the show. He told his story and how he got his verified check on Instagram and all that. But yeah, we interviewed a lot of people, man. We and it's funny if a lot of people um, don't know who D Smoke is from Inglewood, you know. And it's funny about him. We actually interviewed him on the show, and um, Sean August was part of the Only Hip Hop Squad at the time. We actually had a name for it before everybody disappeared. Um, he invited D Smoke on, and we had Zeke on the show. And who would have thought D Smoke would blow up from yeah. Rhythm and Flow? Um, two yeah. years ago, which is funny, man. But yeah, and, and D Smoke went to Eaglewood High with my sister, and they were oh, really close. Yeah, yeah. So it all it all ties together, man. Yeah, that's that's. I think uh, as far as me like doing this, um, you know, I have a, a show where I do like just strictly wrestling, and then um, you know I have this where I kind of blended both worlds. While I talk to wrestlers, I talk to artists. So I think uh, being in this position is always great when you talk to somebody you think is dope and you know, they're at the lower stages or the starting point in their career and then right. you see them take off and they just become something that you saw in them all, the, you know, the whole time. I, I think that's the best part about like oh, yeah. hosting a show like that. Yeah, most definitely, man. Um, yeah. I'm actually um, working with something with Swerve City podcast, man. Um, oh, nice. Isaiah nice. Swerve Scott, but, uh, I don't know if you heard uh, the 1916 Bloody Sundays, um, Bloody Sunday joint. Yeah, the Finn Balor yeah. joint. Yeah, so um, with that, well, well, do you want to continue with, with the conversation with the radio show or we can go into how I became a rapper or what, whatnot? Yeah, yeah, no, let's, let's, let's jump into it, man. Let's, uh, how'd, you, how'd you start with that? How did, you, how did it pique your interest to become a, a rapper? Man, before the only hip hop show, you know what I mean? I'm a rapper myself, so. Um, 2004, um, my cousin, his name is Scoop Loke. Um, he's a Brit, and I'm also a gang member as well, former gang member now, but, um, uh, he taught me everything he knew. Like he, uh, saw me was rapping one time. He was like, Hey, LeBron, um, is that you rapping? I was like, nah, I was rapping on some Snoop Dogg song or whatnot. He was like, you want me to teach you how to rap? And I was like, yeah. And we started battle rapping here and there. And let me remind you, he was undefeated at bat, rap, rap, um, rap battles in Reno Valley and stuff like that. But um, he went to Texas and then he started, you know, doing his career and all that. And then he started banging and all that and got himself in trouble. But, you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's good now. He's not in jail or in prison, but, you know, he could have been. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he actually motivated me to be become a rapper, you know what I mean, to be an MC. And um, I just always, I didn't really have the passion to be a rapper per se at the time, but because mm -hmm. uh, my, my, my um, older brother at the time, before he passed on March 21st, um, he actually inspired me like to continue to keep going and doing music. Yeah. And uh, cause he loved it so much. And then it was just like, and I wanted to show him the song called Lyrical Renegade. And yeah. he passed away and there was no way I can have him listen to it. And so from there, I just started making mixtapes. So I had this LP, the mixtape series. I mean, it's out, it's out on uh, audio Mac, but it's a lot of um, missing link, uh, missing tracks. So I'm pretty much going to upload all the mixtapes again with the full yeah. tracks and everything. And um, I started making mixtapes and, um, and I had um, started doing like recordings, like as far as like original tracks and all that. And um, and then fast forward, I made this internet album called My Underground Journey. It was bunch, most of the songs recorded at the studio. Um, most of the songs were recorded on my phone and 
and I actually made an album out of those. So, but yeah, nice. nah, and, that's, that's, um, that's pretty. That's pretty dope. Um, also, at that time, like, who were who would you say who were some of the guys you were listening to that kind of like you know influenced you as well? Because I know you know West Coast hip hop. I know and East Coast hip hop were kind of like you know two different oh. worlds. And there's there's you know different sets of artists out there. So who were you uh, listening to? I listened to a lot of artists back then, back in the like old school rappers like uh, Mob Deep, um, Busta mm. Rhymes, Nas. Oh, so you you know. listening to the East Coast? <laughs> but let, let me get to the West Coast though. But I mean, you know, Snoop Dogg. You got okay. Tupac. Um, um, some of the po- Dog Pound. Um, uh-huh. Ice Cube, most definitely. Dub C. Uh, Warren G, um, Nate Dog. It's just a lot of those, but my inspiration, well, what my inspirations came from was um, one of my favorite rappers, which is The Game, Immortal Technique, and Tech Nine. Those are like my main favorite rappers that I listen to. They inspired me a lot, especially Immortal Technique, because when we made Dance with the Devil, I was making all types of gangster music and all that. Uh-huh. And when he made Dance with, Dance with the Devil, it kind of gave me a wake up call and I started talking about politics and all that, like being conscious and stuff like that. And it really yeah. just, and a lot of people love that, you know, of that side of me. Yeah, definitely. But, now, okay, now let me, I want to ask you on that point. Mm-hmm. So like for me, I have a friend who, um, he's a, he's a hip hop artist as well. Okay. So for him, I know when he first started, um, he was kind of like that same way. It was like, kind of like gangster rap. So he was kind of like, he was rapping about things that, you know, he wasn't really doing, or, you know, I think he was kind of, he was rapping towards what he thought people wanted to hear from him. And then wow. he kind of, he found, he found his own lane. And, you know, now he's succeeding tremendously in his own lane. Do you kind of feel like, kind of like it was that way with you or do, or, you know, you were kind of like putting out an image that you thought kind of wanted to be seen or were you actually, that was actually you, but, you know, this was also you as well. It was some parts of me, but at the same time, it was just something I was just rapping off and just, because when I started rapping, like before I became like a full like MC, like whatnot, I was just stealing rap lyrics and trying to like figure out my style. That was pretty much what I was at with that. And so I started writing my own lyrics and, you know, just put into like, with me, I always trouble with um, delivery and flow. Okay. Most of the times, but uh, and uh, pronunciations was was really uh, key for me that I always missed out on too. Uh-huh. So once I got the flow right, now I just had to get the enunciations and pronounce every words right, and um, and then after that, like years but after that, I started getting to the the delivery. So now I'm now I'm, I got it down packed. So. Yeah, it, it takes it takes a while to learn the mastery of, of of lyricism and be able to get your voice out there as far as recording it and without reading on your phone at times. Yeah. But it's, no, actually, yeah. But it's actually I actually had like a lot of experiences of recording songs that it was just not me. Like I have made a song called Crank That Ghost Rider. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is that? My cousin, yeah. uh, my cousin Scoop Love was like, LeBron, what the hell is this? Like, and I was like, it's Crank That Ghost Rider. I mean, it's a song, it's dope. And I was like, no, you're killing hip hop, bro. This is whack as shit. <laughs> oh, man. So that's when I was like, you know what? that's what I started like talking about some other shit, you know? Yeah. But um, yes, yeah, so I had my first album, which is called The Executioner. Uh-huh. And the reason why I created that song is because I was dealing with a lot of like negativity as far as my family goes after mm-hmm. my brother's death, you know what I mean? And uh, my grandmother was really just like, discouraged me a lot because she didn't really want to see me as a rapper and everything like she you know it's just one of those things like a lot of people like want to see you doing better other than being a rapper like yeah, getting a job and all that which i which i had a job at the time i was working while i was doing music but um yeah so it was just a lot of negativity and a lot of like 
disrespect when it comes to my profession. And also, I was um, going to LA recording school in Hollywood to become mm -hmm. an engineer. Just to learn, the reason why I became an engineer is because I wanted to learn like how to mix and master songs on my own. So I don't have to, excuse me, I don't have to like depend on anybody or depend on a studio to like record on for me. Yeah, no, that 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 makes sense. And um, you know, I feel like you uh you you appreciate and get a better understanding of music when you are yeah. actually, you know, laying the foundation behind it instead of, you know, just the lyrics as well. Um, you know, something something that you you also kind of talked about that um I know we we always like I'm over here in Jersey, I'm on the East Coast. Um, okay. you know, something something we always hear about you know, on Cali, when it comes to, you know, like young minorities like you, like me, is yeah. uh, kind of like what you talk about is gang culture. How, mm -hmm. like, how serious is the gang culture out there when it's like you're a kid coming up and, you know, because they, on TV you see it and it's always like, they make it like kids are like forced, like they have to choose a side. They have to, you know, join something to feel safe. It's, how how serious is it? It's always been like that for years, man. And mm -hmm. I just... I, I wish I was never a part of it because it just makes me look bad. I, I stopped all that shit a long time ago, but mm -hmm. as far as like, you got studio gangsters, you got internet gangsters. But once I seen that, I was like, you know what? I'm done with that shit. I'd rather just stick to music and all that. But yeah, I'll still, you know, say stuff here and there, you know, cause that's mm -hmm. the mentality in me. But, but, um, when I started banging, it was all in Texas because that's where Scoop Loke was in. You know, he put me on as a affiliate, you know, because I was like more loyal to him because he inspired me to do everything. So he taught me everything. Yeah. And as far as like banging and all that, we did side missions together and all that. But yeah, but that's, but that's another story, man. But the, the thing is like banging nowadays is out. Like it's not really... Yeah. Nobody has time for that anymore. And that whole thing with after Nipsey Hussle got killed, that really hurts me because I knew Nipsey Hussle personally. And wow. he always come to Roscoe's and he always acknowledged me and everything. So I just wish I would have met him again because, you know, when he had the marathon store. But yeah, when they had that peace treaty, but it's like the peace treaty of all the gangs and all that with Big U and all that. We all knew that wasn't gonna last because you know people still still killing each other. Like that shit gotta stop. But you know nobody's really helped. Nobody's really putting the effort to end this game man ridiculously. Because now you got social media gangsters, internet mm -hmm. gangsters, studio gangsters, out of towner gangsters now. That's mm -hmm. from certain sets that they don't really are not really from. And some people just pay their way to be from a set yeah. just to put them on, like as far as blowing up in the music industry and stuff like that. And I'm just like, that is not real. Like, and yeah. you talk to the old, older, older, older G's, like OG's, like they will put you in your place for all that, all that shit that you was talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah, so man. it's like, it's that, that's why I just kind of like stopped banging and all that. Cause it really just not for me. And I wish I was never a part of it, but it is what it is. You know, it's just the mentality in me, but you know, I'm a different person, you know? Yeah, definitely. And, definitely. And, and this year it's about leveling up. You know what I mean? I was just telling everybody 2021 is the year of leveling up. And if you ain't with it, so what, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be doing the same thing that you've been doing for years, you know, it's on that bullshit, you know? Yeah, definitely. No, I have, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends that also are the same way, you know, they, they did stuff when they were younger, now they're older and, you know, they're kind of like refocusing their life on things that they want to do. Right. So, you know, it kind of like, they kind of like left that behind them. Um, you know, I think, you know, that that's just something that is one of the things that, you know, black neighborhoods, minority neighborhoods that, you yeah. know, we, we deal with and, you know, yeah. something that kind of hurts us, you know, and you know maybe one day we'll progress past it you know we'll see you know what comes out of it um yeah, yeah but you know also one thing uh you do you keep up with battle rap i heard you say you you know you started off uh, doing battle rap you still on it or not 
Nah, I mean, I've watched battle rap here and there, but not all the time. I know a lot of battle rappers like uh, Psychosis, you know, he's he's in a, um, a band, I mean, a group called Slash Mafia. I'm actually wanted to collaborate with them one day. So, because I know all three members actually, um, it's um, Psychosis and then he has uh, Danny Beretta and uh, Jay Odyssey. Yeah, uh-huh. you got to watch out of those two because those two are hella talented, especially ty- Psychosis himself. You know, um, also who who else I know? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm pretty much. Um, yeah, I'll check them out. The West, the West Coast is kind of like, um, because I know I feel like battle rap is kind of like always been like dominated by like East Coast, but it's like right wow. now there's a lot of West Coast dudes that are like oh, killing it. Ash, Ash Cash, she's a battle Ash rapper Cash, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, I met they, her too. Yeah, there's there's a lot of dope dudes out of the west and the west are kind of like killing it right now yeah. um i know if, if you watch url you know they got Gichi Gotti, who's like the, the him, top yeah. dog there yeah. uh they got rx who's out in the west rum nitty who's out in the west as well um so it's 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 a lot of um a lot of dope things coming on danny myers too that's another dope dude out of the west uh here old head um but um, yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of those uh, dope dudes out there, and I enjoy it because I think it ties into you know wrestling, ties into hip hop as well. It's just everything oh, just course. blended all to all together, and I just and I just love like now they they take it serious. If you watch URL, you'll see like these dudes create promos. They yeah. freaking like they they shoot it's, videos. It's yeah, it's the yeah. same thing. They create the, they create the beef even if they don't got beef with each other. You know, it's a it's a sense right. of competition, so uh, yeah. it's pretty dope. But the West Coast definitely they're doing their thing when it comes to to battle rap for sure. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So for you, um, let's say uh, outside of work making music, right, or mm-hmm. you know engineering or anything, what are there any other hobbies or any other talents that you would say you have or you do outside of that? Um, it's funny because as a kid I used to draw. Like I used to draw a lot uh-huh. and uh, I used to make paper stuff. Like at 10 years old, I made, um, I made boots out of paper. Oh, wow. <laughs> and um, if, if you sit here and tell my mom, she, if you don't believe me, you could ask my mom. Like my mom actually saw that, saw the shit. Like I was like, man, what the hell you got on? <laughs> but it was creative. It was creative though. And um, you know, it's like, me having a learning disability as you know I'm, I'm autistic yeah. you know um, a lot of people don't know that and um i was diagnosed at the age of four so i didn't really get to speak till i was like four or five years old oh, man. and i had like a speech delay so it's like so i had like an auditory process deficiency is the main like main thing that's like it's kind of like a trait like like say if you say something to me right now and I'm trying to process in a later or two. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes I process quick, but right now, I mean, I, I process a lot of things quick because I'm learning to have a conversation because I didn't like, because back in middle school and high school, I didn't really have like conversations with everybody. I was really quiet. I was yeah. like the silent type, you know, and still am, but I'm now I'm starting to like open up and start talking again. But what got me going was music because music was mm-hmm. really got me going as far as like writing the lyrics and saying how I feel, you know? And um, I'm actually releasing my second and my last album called Lyrical Renegade. The reason why is because, as I mentioned that I lost my brother at at, at 18 years old when he passed Mm -hmm. in 2010. Mm -hmm. And all this time, like I didn't get over his death until 2016. But the depression and anxiety and the suicide, all that was there. And yeah. I feel like I was never going to change. I think I was going to be the same. And so one day, like last year, I started working out with my with my boys. And I started, you know, seeing the, the change in me. And I started, like, having a better mindset and um, motivate, motivate myself to do better and taking care of myself. You know, self-care is really important. Yeah. And... Um, that's where the level up came from and and i started to like make things happen for myself like like to, um next week i'm actually gonna get a um 
a passport. I'm actually going to work on that and then working on getting the LLC for the Only Hip Hop Show and then getting nice. my name trademarked as far as LeVon Pierce goes. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. stepping up, doing some ball shit. You know what I mean? So that's why I, I um, go on a different path because for the album Lyrical Renegade, it's pretty much like a lot of politics, a lot of political stuff, and there's a lot of album fillers, and then you got a lot of like personal songs, and then you got like a lot of like emotional, depressing songs. And I, I've made nothing but depressing music. So that's the reason why I really just don't want to do music that has depressing music. I'm not going to retire, of course not. Yeah. But I am transitioning because I'm actually trying to be a professional wrestler as well. And that's oh, wow. funny that, and that's funny that this podcast is is for hip hop and wrestling. Because yeah. I do uh, now. I'm in a I'm in a um, different path of making a wrestling theme music. That's where 1916 Bloody Sunday came to play. So when I made that song was, I had a song called No, no Stopping featuring my cut my other cousin Nice Man Forever, and mm-hmm. I was like I said something like this. Hit you with the sling blade, Finn Balor. Grab a chick by her waist, fuck her for hours, right? So I mm-hmm. took the, and I slowed it down. I was like, put you in the, put you in the swing blade, hit you with the sling blade, Finn Balor. And then I was like, 1916, it's a bloody yeah. Sunday, know what I mean? So I thought of something. I was like, you know what? I thought my boy, um, Spiffy Uno, who's also an artist who does, who um, raps about wrestling as well, too, at times. Mm-hmm. Goldberg is one of his favorite wrestlers, but um, we're actually making a project. Where the, I don't, I'm not supposed to speak on this, but we're actually making a project called Undertaker and Goldberg, something in that mm-hmm. nature. Um, wow. Because Undertaker is, is, is one of my idols. Like, he's, he's my main favorite wrestler you know he inspired me a lot not just because of the dark side and all that because I was really about that life at the time like being the dark side and all that um he inspired like a lot of people like as far as like being a locker room leader and and he's also a Christian and all that I used to be a Christian myself but now I just uh, I'm a faith believer in God you know yeah yeah because I grew up in the church and stuff like that um but yeah so when I started making wrestling themes, it's just like crazy with, especially with the 1916 Bloody Sunday joint. And if, if I kind of, if I kind of lost you, um, like, if we, cause I know we're talking about the 1960 joint, you know, just let me know. Cause I always jump back and forth from things. <laughs> now that I got you, I got you. <laughs> so the 1960, um, the 1916 joint was just like amazing because I was trying to find a beat for it. And uh-huh. I found that beat because it was a beat that was uh, that has the same tempo, but it has a dark into it. But it was it was so fast. Mm-hmm. But then when I found this one, this was dark and it has the re- original like sound. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this beat, and that's why I, you know. And I did and I did uh, write the lyrics for it. Well, as I'm writing this, it was only one verse actually, as you heard the original one because it has mm-hmm. explicit lyrics on it. Um, as I was writing this, I was actually studying Finn Balor's origin about like what 1916 mm-hmm. meant because he explained what 1916 was. It was uh, mm-hmm. Easter Sunday. Yeah. And then that finished, and so he named the finisher that way. But before that finisher, 19 before he named that finisher 1916, Bloody Sunday was the original name for 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 the move. And yeah. if you go and watch the indies, like uh, as Prince Devitt, he actually had that move called Bloody Sunday. But then when mm-hmm. he came to WWE, when the NXT, he named it 1916. 16, so I yeah. pretty much dedicate the song to his finishing move. But Bloody Sunday is like Total Massacre in Ireland and stuff like that. And 1916 is Easter Sunday in Ireland. So I pretty much dedicate both of those name both of those things into one finisher yeah that's 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 dope man i, I like I, that I, yeah go, no, ahead. go ahead go ahead now i was just gonna say like a lot of people loved it and people were saying mm-hmm. like west side gun should be involved in it maybe just strip the the beat off and just cut, have the instrumental playing and just him rapping 
But then I was, I wanted my boy Spiffy Uno to do it. But then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have somebody else on it. And then I heard Montezzi from mm-hmm. Swerve City Podcast. Mm-hmm. Before, before he was on W Network, I actually sent him the song and he was like, man, that shit is dope, bro. Like, oh man. And he loved it. And I was like, you know what? I was thinking about somebody because I heard um, the song called Moxley and um, mm-hmm. Moxley was was a dope song I heard. But let me remind you, I've been following Montezzi's um, music career for a very long time, especially yeah. when he did that uh, Roman Reigns joint, Heart of the Warrior. Yeah, yeah. And um, we actually talked about this on a conversation with LP on the Only Hip Hop Show's Instagram post, I mean, Instagram page uh, for the Only Hip Hop Show. Um, I brought him brought him on as a guest, and I told him that I followed him um, since then, and I didn't even get a chance to uh, communicate with him until, you know, I started following him and saying that you know the, Mo- the Moxley song was dope, and um, I was like, you know what, I want you on this song, and it took six months, <laughs> six oh, months man. to get the song back. Cause you yeah. know, his writing process was his, his writing process is like, cause he's doing other songs as well. Cause he was, yeah. you know, he's been doing other wrestling theme songs for everybody. So, so he wanted this song to be perfect. And when he sent that verse back, it was fucking fire. And oh man. So See, that's dope. Yeah. That's definitely so, dope. With, with, um, Cause I know with that one, and I know you also you got uh, Black Mass um, as Black well. Mass you yeah. know what? I'm gonna tell you this though. I'm I'm a huge fan of Aleister Black. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. when he was at NXT, like his character was so perfect until you know we got got now as far as Aleister Black. But he's been yeah. MIA, I guess. But you know because the whole Zelina Vega um, incident when she got released. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that 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 definitely tied in. There. But I see you. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I see, I see you like the Black Mask of 1916, yeah. um, the Power Freestyle, the Warning Shot as well. Um, wow. Those are ones I see you like blended, like the wrestling. wrestling cover. You know, I made those covers too, because like it resonates the stuff that I was talking about. Now, mm-hmm. as far as the first one, which is what oh, Warning Shot, the first one was Black Mask Freestyle. So Black Mask Freestyle, yeah. I dedicate that to him because there was a lot of celebrities that uh, celebrities like resonates with me that it resonates with him and um the fact that you know he's a huge striker in nxt and i'm like um i just started writing the verse to it because i was actually gonna do a full song to it but i was like you know what i'm just gonna do that verse and yeah. and then when I posted it, when I released it, because I was releasing another EP, which No Stopping was on. Mm-hmm. And um, it was called The Lost Files, because No Stopping was an old song that I was released, and it was just there. So with Black Mass Freestyle, when I promoted it, it was just out of the blue. Like, I just kind of released it on digital outlets. And when people, and when people heard the song, it was fire. And people, yeah. um, my boy Ilar the Sandman was like, man, you should have made a full song out of that. This song should have been longer. So that way, Alistair Black can do one of his workouts in it. And I was like, you know what? It's only one, one freestyle you only need because, because it was only dedicated to him. So, yeah. And when I tag Alistair Black, I want everybody to tag Alistair Black. He saw that and posted on his page, posted on oh, his shit. Instagram story. I was like shocked. And then a lot of his fans was like, this song is dope. And I was like, you seen this post? And I was like, nah, I didn't even see this post like that. And and I saw it. And I had proof too. Like I actually posted on, I reposted it too. So I was like, dang, that is huge. So that's yeah. what made me like to do more of um it made it made me want to do more like songs like that. So that's when 1916 Bloody Sunday came to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, orig- the original one, not the remix with Montezzi. Yeah. But that was after the fact, you know. And um, and speaking of Montezzi, you know, he actually promoted on the um, Swerve City Podcast YouTube this, uh, YouTube page. And mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just thankful for that because you know he's he's featured on there, and 
we're at, I'm actually had a conversation with him and we're doing something with uh, Swerve City Podcast. Um, I'm actually going to meet up with him and Swerve um, this year in nice. Florida. So nice. we're actually going to have a conversation and actually collaborate on a song together. And um, man. That'd be major. That's big time. That definitely, that'd oh, be yeah. dope, man. Oh yeah, most definitely, man. Um, and there is a surprise for Secret um, um the second season too, but I'm mm-hmm. not gonna tell it what it is. But you know, but um, right. yeah, it's it's a, it's a surprise that that I'm, that's gonna be on. Now I'm gonna be on um, Sports City podcast, but I can't tell you what it is because I don't want to want it to spoil the surprise. But. Definitely, definitely not. People gotta look out for that, man. Definitely, right. yeah. I can't I can't yeah. wait to uh, see that. Uh, yeah, so man. for for you, when, when it comes to wrestling. So, like, what was it? For, what was it about wrestling that you know made you fall in love with it? Man, um, Undertaker was the one that I was interested in watching, and he was beating the shit out of Kane in '98. I forgot what <laughs> match that was. I was like, we, and then I saw the Rock, you know, hitting the steel chair with Mankind. I was like, mm-hmm. man, this is something I would want to watch. So I've been watching wrestling ever since, man. But now it's more becoming for more entertainment. Uh-huh. So back then it was just more of like violence and all that because of the attitude era. Yeah. Then I started watching EC a little bit of ECW, and it was really crucial. Now I was in wrestling school called Centino Brothers. That's where a lot most of these wrestlers came from that were that signed to WE, uh-huh. signed to MMW signed to New Japan Pro Wrestling and um, and I believe some in Impact. I don't I'm not sure about don't quote me though, but but there were some some students that were a part of Impact Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, take it like this um, Douglas James he was one of my favorite wrestlers from yeah. Centino Brothers. Um, fortunately he's no longer a, a wrestler because the speaking out movement Due to his relationship at the in the past with uh, Heather Monroe, yeah, yeah, I was I was devastated. I was hurt because of the fact. I'm glad he apologized for that because it was really because I was really looking forward to him being being a major star in Major League Wrestling. So yeah, um, Brody King was one of my main favorites that that inspired me as well. Um, when I have a, I had a lot of conversations with Brody because he's also a um, a musician as well. He does. He's he's part of a rock band called God's Hate. I listen mm-hmm. to one of his songs. It's cool. Yeah, he he's cool, but you know his voice. I don't know about his voice, but <laughs> but it's 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 good that he's done. He does music though. Yeah. You know, but and now he's at Ring of Honor. Like <laughs> um, Jake Atlas, who I met too. Um, I had a picture with him on on Twitter. I don't know if you. If you are if you follow me on Twitter, uh, mm-hmm. I actually post about him when um, he actually did an interview with Swerve City Podcast, and he um, talked about how he was gay and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. and you know did a lot of things to when he was on Undercover Bosses, when he was um, when he was um, had a conversation with um, Stephanie McMahon on television and stuff like that, and yeah, and that's when he came that's when he came out with it too, so. Yeah, I actually bought um, his T-shirt. You know, I had the conversation when he actually inspired a lot of people. You know. Um, yeah, that's pretty dope. That's and definitely. Now, and that's... now he's in NXT. You know, I don't know if he's having a rivalry with Isaiah Swerve Scott, but. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. They had a match uh, last week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Swerve won that one. Yeah. Because yeah, I think he's starting to turn heel too, so I'm I'm pretty sure that that'll be dope yeah. for him. I think that that'll be pretty that'll be pretty dope right. for him to do that. Yeah. I'm hoping I'm hoping so. I I kind of think he can be, I think he could be what uh kind of like what Velveteen should have been if all the you know drama didn't happen with him, just because of his his personality. He got the swag, and you know he just everything about him is just is just dope. So I'm hoping that you know something good comes out of it, and you know we'll see yeah. where it goes. Right, so, right, yeah. So for you, so, for you, what do what do you, what do you like about like wrestling nowadays, and what is what are some things you think that they could fix? 
Well, for me, it's just the wrestling moves, the characters. Mm -hmm. Like Undertaker said in previous interviews, like I'm always looking into character and the persona and the mannerisms, all the all the moves and all that. That's great. That's that's a perfect fit for a wrestler to do mm -hmm. to do like right. But character is mostly mainly important, and I think WWE lost that. I don't mm -hmm. want to keep saying I don't want to keep bashing on WWE really because you know I'm having a relationship with them, and I also. I'm also building a relationship with one of the producers of Death Rebel too. Nice. Uh, he also is follow he also follow me on Instagram. He actually likes a lot of my music. Um, yeah, um, I just had a conversation with him today because um, Big E's theme song came out today. Yeah, yeah, uh, feel the power. It's actually fucking fire. I love the song a lot. And Wale actually stepped up on that one. Ooh, yeah, he actually stepped up on that one. Um, yes. That's pretty, that's dope, see? But yeah, yeah, it's just mostly, and the bookings, I don't know, because like, there's a lot of, I mean, I mean, WWE, it's WWE, you know, they're going to book whatever they're going to book, you know what I mean? Because they have, they have to do something with, you know, have edgier content. Like USA said, they need to get uh, more content, you know, as far as um, adult content. They just yeah. need to bring something that, that adult that us adults can enjoy, like we enjoy, like in the Attitude Era or like ECW, or or we can bring it back to ruthless aggression, like like bring yeah. that. Maybe not bring those eras back, but just bring that feeling back. Yeah, the intensity, you know, make the blood, right? Make it more gory, like like ECW. Maybe not that extreme, but you know, as far as like hitting people with the steel chairs again, you know, just entertain. Like it's more yeah. like entertainment nowadays and that's that of wrestling. I think that's where WWE lost that. But yeah. I'm always a huge fan of WWE. I always, I subscribe to them all the time. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, they just got to do better with the booking. Yeah, you know, no, def and definitely. Especially, I you know, stop changing the names of the stars every time like an yeah. NXT star comes to, to the main roster. Like, come on, man. Yeah, no, nah, they gotta start with that for sure. Um, I that that's one thing I hate. I hate I even like with the whole retribution, how they just changed everybody's name and all that stuff. That's that was uh kind of weird to me too. Um, right. but I think I think I think, I think with, with them, I think um, we I don't know if they they realize like a, a good majority of their fans like we were the kids in the attitude era that loved wrestling. And now we're the adults that still are following since that time. So it's like, of course, yeah, we all, you know, we got older. We have families and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, you want to take your kids to the shows. But then at the same time, you want something that's for you. I want to take my son with me to it. I want to mm -hmm. take my daughter with me to it. But it's like at the same time, I want to enjoy it for me too as an adult. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like at the, at the same time, it's like, yeah. It's, it's cool as it's family friendly, you know, the PG era and all that stuff. Yeah. But it's like, at this point, it's like things got to change. Things always got to change. That's why they had the golden era, which was kind of similar to the PG era. And then now yeah. they flipped it to the attitude era. Now mm -hmm. they kind of flipped it back. Now they kind of need to make that rotation again. And because this is what people want, man. That's what they, they want to see. Right. As um, the reason why like they had to like stop all the edgier content that we used to love is because Linda McMahon went to politics. You yeah, know, that's what stopped everything. But now, since Linda McMahon is never going to go away, the politics—I mean, not leaving from politics at all—so they're going to have to do something to get these fans to attend because ratings are dropping. Yeah. Ratings are dropping like crazy. Like they gotta step their game up when it comes to, especially characters. Let them be themselves. I guess yeah. because like, WWE doesn't want it to be want them to become star. Want them to become stars. I guess they don't want they don't want a Rock. They don't want a John Cena. They don't want a Roman Reigns. They don't want a Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, I mean, but you got to let these stars, you got to let the superstars lose, man. Like, as far as, like, maybe just, like, let them be themselves. Like, yeah. which I'm pretty sure WWE is doing that. I'm I'm really enjoying what they're doing with Roman Reigns because this is where you're supposed to be. Cause yeah, 
Yeah, this is like the first. This is like something that they they listened to us on that I think was like a great move. Like dudes, even with uh, you think like John Cena, like people have been asking to turn John Cena heel for the longest, and I think that could have been something amazing if it would have happened. And like right. I, they're, you're seeing right now, like what they did with Roman, like it's it's turned out to be the best thing that's like on WWE right now. It's like right. the the most mm-hmm. interesting storylines. And he's, he's like killing it being in this role. So, I mean, sometimes you just gotta, like you said, you just gotta let these guys like be themselves and just be loose of course. and let them enjoy their character. Cause it's like, if not, then it's like everything is, it's not going to be, you know, too good. So I don't, I don't know, but you know, it, it is what it is. Hopefully, you know, WWE gets back to, you know, what we like from them. And just like you said, I don't, I don't think this is just, you know, just because WWE is the biggest, so we talk about WWE the most. But mm-hmm. I think this is, like, all across wrestling. Like, everybody, right. you know what I mean? It's not just WWE. Like, everybody yeah. needs to do, like, better stories. Because you could look at any company and you could give a 100 things that they got going wrong, too, as well. Right. So, you know, everybody right. in general, I think, because, I, I, you know, it's something I love. I love wrestling. I know people who are fans of wrestling love wrestling deeply as well. So, it's yeah. like something you want to see succeed. You don't want to see anybody fail at all. But, yeah. you know, you want them to change. You want them to explore options and do different things. And, um, you know, something It's funny with this conversation that we're having. Mm-hmm. So I have a, a friend of mine who um, she runs a, a podcast as well. Okay. And um, she had the idea, you know, since they had on uh Raw, like they had a segment with um, Tori Wilson and she um, had mentioned Cardi B and some other hip hop artists and stuff like that. Right. That's so, also what's confusing with, that was all confusing on Monday Night Raw. I didn't yeah, even that, watch it. That, 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 was, that was weird. But yeah. so from what my, what my friend, what she got from it was, she was like, she was thinking, you know, since WWE, since USA wants like more edgier content, more things to get ratings. She was thinking like, oh, um they should do something kind of like where you know it's hip-hop and wrestling like we talk about all the time he's like bring some of these guys in maybe you do do something special where cardi b comes in maybe you do do something special you know we see snoop Dogg all the time so you get some of these guys that actually want to be a part of this and you create a partnership and make something out of it Uh, um so i kind of thought like that was a good idea by by her that she had came up with and right. Cardi B was online. She was going back and forth with some wrestlers, um, yeah. you know, talking. And she was, you know, it, it was it was pretty dope. So I think we, you know, we we combined the ro- worlds of rock and roll with wrestling plenty of times. Right. So it's, mm-hmm. I think it'll be dope with, you know, wrestling. It'll put a different set of eyes on the product as well. And uh, we'll see. Hopefully they can capitalize on that too. And it, it'd be dope because hip hop is made up of what? is is majority people that look like you and me. So, right. you know, for me, as as somebody watching that, like they say, representation matters. Like, it would be dope for me to see two of my favorite worlds collide together like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So a lot of MCs now are just implementing a lot of wrestling um, in their music. I mean, I've done it a lot too, but, you know, now I'm starting doing like theme songs. Maybe not for like wrestlers really, but just talk about like, like make dedications to them. Um, there's um, there's actually a song. That's why like that's why I was like upset about the hurt business joint. But when I heard the joint yeah. now, it wasn't it wasn't what I was expected. So yeah, yeah. So I was tripping out of nowhere. But I just saw that that and MVP wasn't even on the verse. It wasn't even on the song. So I was just like, they said that MVP had a verse. Yeah, but yeah. Where's MVP's post. verse? Yeah, yeah. Where's MVP's verse? I have I haven't seen not, I haven't heard anything. All I heard was Smoke DZA, uh-huh. West Side Gun, and uh-huh. Wale. That was it. Yeah. So I, I have no idea. But I I still I remember in the post they they did put um uh MVP was on it too. So I don't know, maybe just because they took the picture together. I don't know, but from what they I got, have it, a, yeah, but, I was expecting him to be on the track too. Right, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna put that on the album version or something like that. I guess they just released that as the single. Yeah, but who knows? 
But um, you see, did you see the thing with uh, Booker T and Bad Bunny? Man, that that was special because even when I was, even though if I heard the song, but it was kind of like it was just obvious. Like, is that really a tribute, or is this just something that he's just feeling? But nah, yeah. it was actually a tribute. Yeah. And yeah, I actually saw the music video. It was actually dope. Like, I actually loved the music video a lot. And um, even yeah. Booker T didn't really say much in the video. Uh-huh. But, you know. <laughs> he was, yeah, he was getting it. He was, he was doing his, his, his dance moves and all that. But I think yeah. I think these, like, like, what we just talked about, these are even more examples of, like, <laughs> just keeping, you know, that connection between hip-hop and wrestling just right. going in, in ways that it, it could be successful. Like think people respond to these things and people enjoy it as well. And I think we even got, don't we got Snoop Dogg coming up on AEW soon too? He's supposed to be doing some commentary or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that was supposed to be first of the year, like first month of the year or something like that. I don't that. know if it, yeah, I don't know if it, if Pat, I think he might be on the, I think he might be on tonight. I think yeah, I think the the, the ninth. Yeah, because they're having a spe- oh, okay. Yeah, because they're having a special tonight. Because they're doing two specials. Yeah, so this is the second part of the special. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so he's supposed to be on tonight, but it's like yo, it's like it's easy to see like yo, combine these worlds together, man. And I think there can't be anything but uh, success between the two. Um, for you though, what I'm interested in with. Um, how did you decide like like you're gonna take it serious to like actually do like wrestling training and to you know pursue that dream? Well, wrestling was really my first love before I started rapping. Oh and man, I went I went to music because because uh, just inspired by you know. And I wanted to, I wanted to be become a wrestler because I was actually in shape for it at the time while I was doing music as a kid. Um, I just been focused on music, like it was music just took over me. Yeah. I didn't even get like, I didn't even like knew they had wrestling training, training and all that. So I just, I kind of missed out on all of that. But what what inspired me to get into wrestling is because Santino Brothers, they had a lot of their students. I was at an event, I think it was like Monday Night Raw or something like that, but Raw before uh, WrestleMania 31 in yeah. 2015. Um, there were some guys from students from uh, from school and they was charging a class like 25 bucks a per, uh, per session. And I was about to think about doing that, but I wasn't in shape. So, yeah. so in 2017, I started like, Overseeing, went to orientation to see how the school was going to be, how the classes all be. That's how I met Brody King. Um, I met um, Brody King, Douglas James. I mm-hmm. met Joey Chaos, mm-hmm. um, Robbie Phoenix before he would before he became my personal trainer at the time. Um, I met um, Joey's wife Sylvia, which is Jezebel Romo. Um, yeah, I met everybody, man. Even Eli mm-hmm. Everfly, who was yeah. known as Dane the Bryant Brothers when um, he was on SmackDown when he pinned uh, the Miz with the small package. Yeah, yeah. No, schoolboy, schoolboy, schoolboy. Boy, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was just crazy, man. I also went, uh, met Willie Mack. Willie Mack, w- Willie Mack, I don't think Willie Mack was part of part of the school really he just he was like uh he was uh um he was just like helping out no he like was competing team. for it yeah he was competing for them okay okay because he had a match because he had a match with uh brody king because he was the champion at the time and i saw that event and um yeah it was cool man I, it was like future stars like um slice boogie um hide I'm I'm really close with Hyde though, because he's a he's a solid um, individual. Uh, Cameron Gates, Dylan Kyle mm-hmm. Cox, which is DKC, better known as um, dang, I forgot what their tag team name is. But they were a stable with Jake Atlas. Okay. So, 
But what happened when I was um, getting trained with Robbie Phoenix, I was learning a lot, man. Like as far as like learning, ro- learning the ropes and all that. Mm-hmm. So the last time I was doing, I was doing a lockup, but that was the last time I did mm-hmm. anything. So, you know, I was going through so much at the time. And now I'm actually was going now. Last year I was actually trying to go back. Hold on, let me know if that's my. Okay, we're good. Um, I was trying to get back into professional wrestling because it's been a year, like it's been like two years and some change, like a year and some change that mm-hmm. I haven't been back to wrestling because I started training in 2008, so oh, 2019. So I wanted to come back in uh, 2020, starting off because I was saving money for it. Mm-hmm. So COVID-19 hit. Yep. And then the yep. school got closed down and I was really depressed and all of that too because I really wanted to go back and and trying to go to school but now now i'm actually um thinking about going um thinking about purchasing um the class uh, the online class they're doing i think there's like um character developmentals talking about promos and stuff like that so i'm probably I'm gonna I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm gonna join the class because i think i have still have time but i'm not sure i'm still thinking about it I'm still thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, nah, that, that'd be dope, man. That'd definitely be dope. You, you know, living out two of the things that, you know, you're in love with for sure. I think that'd be right. Um, yeah. That'd be cool. Um, so yeah. for you, when you, when you first started, you know, making music mm-hmm. and to where you are like right now, yeah. how do you think you've progressed from that time to now? Man, I progressed a lot. That's why I made the project. Uh, this uh, project's called LeBron's Progression. LeBron's Progression was my first studio project, mm-hmm. uh, EP, uh, seven songs. And I progressed a lot from the songs I made from um, as a kid until, you know, when I was going to LA recording school. And I actually yeah. graduated around that same year when I, yeah. when I dropped this project. Um, and then I made um, part two which was my best body of work because it's more all hip hop. Well, I'll, I'll say this to you when we're done with this, but um, yeah, so the last progression too was really my best body of work. And I've actually like have uh, Vader on and he was, um, he was doing the ad libs for me and everything. And then my boy Odyssey, he was on the original Warzone track, mm-hmm. which was the first one. Then, um, then I have a Spanish track called Mother Soon. Now, I'm not, I don't speak Spanish like that, but you know, I implement some Spanish in there. Mother uh-huh. Show means bad. So, yeah, yeah. I've been cursed and all that. So, no, it means curse, my bad. It means curse. And I've been like, I felt like I've been cursed throughout, throughout the years because of my family, what they did to me and all that. So, um, and then I have this hip hop joint called Three Strikes. And there's another inspiration song. Um, that I have on there, it's called Adapt or Paris. And mm-hmm. Triple H was the one that told the shield, you either adapt or okay. you perish. That's yep. evolution. So that's where that came from. So, and a lot, of, and I made that uh, song for a reason because a lot of people died. Um, my boy, uh, Sincerely Scooby got killed. And he was the one that um, made that Tatiana video on Blueface, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, he was the one that that shot that video, and that's where it got him blew up. That's where I, that's where um, got Blueface blew up from that, mm-hmm. and um, and he got killed. And Cecilia Scooby got killed, and and that's when. And then my mentor passed away, which was Johnny Morris, who helped me create the only hip hop show. And mm-hmm. I was just like, man, I was like, in life, you either adapt or you perish, and yeah. I feel like. Johnny Morris have impact, um, adapted, you know, in yeah. a lot of ways. So, and, and that song really, really like inspired me a lot because you know you, you have to adapt, and I adapt so much. Like I remember that I didn't like doing trap mute, trap beats. I didn't like like rapping on trap beats because it's like mumble rap shit, right? Mm-hmm. So. When I started like working with uh, Spiffy Uno, who I engineered for, um, he was like, 
man, you got to try these beats out. So I had this producer called, his name is Prince of Flair. He's actually was the one that made 1916 Bloody Sunday um, power. He mm -hmm. made, um, he made majority of all the beats that he made, it was made by him. Warning Shot, Black Mass Freestyle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he made a lot of, a lot of beats for me as far as like the songs and stuff. And um, now, warning shot, that was inspiration from the Usos when that was a warning shot to any tag team that got a problem with us. Uh -huh. and that's what like Jimmy and Jay were saying at WrestleMania, um, what was it, WrestleMania 35? I think it was 35, when, oh, they, were tag, when they were tag team champions. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where that came from. But the inspiration from that was I was going through so much in 2020. I mean, 19, I mean, 2019. And, mm -hmm. and I lost um, a lot of respect for um, my boy Sean August because he was the last member of the only hip hop squad at the time to keep the show going. And what happened was with the Prince of LA incident, like he asked about Blueface and then he said, fuck that. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah but i didn't understand what that was i thought it was a joke in a way and then and then people were telling me like you got to take that down that was really unprofessional when i looked at it back and i said it was really unprofessional and that's what led sean august to leave the show and he started the god talk podcast which is very successful and i'm i'm proud of him but you know yeah yeah but uh no, yeah it's a warning shot now power i mean you can read between the read between the lines on that one. Um, it was dedicated to Roman Reigns, unfortunately. I mean, fortunately, and um, and I related to me at some point. You know, I'm always on my bullshit. Like, you know, I've been reading and writing and stuff like that. I've been uh, reading this book called The Artist's Way, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, from there on, I started doing morning pages, started writing and all that, and. I just been, I just had a better mindset, you know? That's why I said, you know, you'll probably you'll see, you'll probably hear me say this a lot, like leveling up, like leveling up 2021, you know? Yeah, nah, so, that, that, definitely, definitely. That's a, definitely, that's a the good mindset to have going into right. the new year, you know, mm -hmm. especially coming off, you know, what last year was and everything. Man. But it's Every like, you know, I've, I've, I just looked at it as, you know, time just to, you know, plan and get everything going. And then, like, this year is the year, like, yo, you should just have, like, all your plans, like, you putting them into effect. you putting them into right. action this year. Yeah. So just like you said, leveling up. So that's the way I look at it, too. Like, this year is, like, it's time for you to, like, put your stuff in. Put your, put your everything, put all the work in. Get everything mm -hmm. you want to get done. Like, get that oh, done definitely. this year. Cause it's like, we had all that time and it's like, and if you went through what we just went through and that didn't give you no motivation to keep going, to start something up or, you know, to just become a better person, then it's like, then you just don't got it in you. Right. <laughs> it's like, that. that's just it. <laughs> you just don't got it in you. But definitely, you know, I'm looking forward to this year, man. I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, all the good things that's going to happen for you and, you know, seeing how, you know, continue to elevate as well as the artist. Yeah, most definitely, man. Um, I have a, um, there's another joint, a uh, wrestling joint. Speaking of wrestling theme songs, I have a song called Nia Jax coming out. And that's actually. Oh, yeah? Be, nice. Yeah. It's actually going to be the first single off my album, Leo Renegade. Well, well, first, but because I'm having to, uh, another single before that, like two more singles before that, before mm -hmm. Nia Jax, but um, it's featuring my boy, Man Manny. And uh, we're also have, uh, making a mixtape project together. It's called Bludgeon Brothers, um, tribute to Rowan and Harper, you know, since nice. we lost Brody Lee, you know. And That'd so be the question dope, was, yeah, so the I question like was, it. who is Harper and who is Rowan? So I pick Harper because I, I resonate him a lot. So, which is Brody yeah. Lee, man, because it, it really breaks my heart to mm -hmm. see a guy that, that's always been respected and not getting the recognition that he deserves just gone too soon, man. Like, and yeah. 
I didn't even watch the tribute. I watched I watched it on YouTube, some parts on YouTube, uh-huh. because I didn't want to be emotional because I, I didn't have time. I didn't really have time to be emotional and all that because I've been I dealt with that last year and ten years yeah. after that. I don't want to deal with that. But it was emotional yeah. because Brody Lee actually inspired a lot of people and he brought people in and joy and laughter and you I'm pretty sure you heard um watch the um being the elite uh clips when they mm-hmm. were a tribute to uh, Brody Lee man all that yelling and screaming I was like damn I, that's probably why he probably lost his life because you know he's been yelling a lot but at the, but you know but that's what he does but that's what he does you know what I mean because he wanted to entertain people and I and I always respect him for that. And I wish I would have met him, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, one thing I'm always like, um, that I I always feel bad about when things like this happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, you know, everybody knew like uh Brody Lee was like such a great person. And I think it's with a lot of people, like a lot of people that do a lot of great things, and it's like we don't ever appreciate them while they're here. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like when they pass away, that's when, you know, we give them all this praise for how good a person they are, all the great things they did, all the amazing talent that they did. And it's like, I kind of wish that we would just, we would give people more credit when they're here. You know what I mean? Right. Show more love to people while they're here and don't wait until they pass away and be like, you know what? Dang, yo, he was really great at what he did. He was a nice person. He did this. He right. did this. He did that. Yeah. Like, yo, let let the world know that while these people are, are alive. That's the that's the right. only one bad thing I, I I I hate that always happens. And it's like there's so many great people out there and that are doing great things. And it's like mm-hmm. they deserve that recognition because we got a lot of negativity that goes on daily that right. we get it from news, we get it from Instagram, we get it from any social media. We're going to get all the negative stuff first. So it's like, we got to be as people like, yo, push that positivity out there and push those right. people that are out there doing good things and, and give credit. And, and then on top of it too, we got to stop hating on people because that's, the, that's that's what something I was that hurts people. us. That hurts mm-hmm. us from giving love to people as well, because it's like, you might, you might be like, like I might, you know, I'm doing a podcast. And then if I see somebody else is doing a podcast and I think, oh, they landed a big guest or they did a good show, it's like, why would I not give them love? It's like people were like, oh, they, we're doing the same thing. So, nah, I'm not going to show no love. I'm not going to help them out. I'm not going to support right. them or nothing like that. And that's, we got to stop being like that as people, man. We just got to show love and stop being yeah. haters. Stop being envious of each and, other and for no reason. Beefs too. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. And all beefs and all that. And that's where I've been telling people, like, I don't have time to talk down on people no more because I did that Seriously. all my life and that's not cool. Like, and I did, and I um, talk so much shit. It's like, come on, man. We got to do, we got to do better than that. We have to love, uplift each other, man, because we, we're getting killed left and right. And, and as you can see that I'm watching this um, news the um, about the the capital like um yeah. the trump supporters coming in and invading the um congress um the cap uh, u.s capital yeah and it was just like it was really unnecessary because i guess because trump is not in office anymore so it's like yeah it's it's, it's wild it's, it's man real, it's real wild it's, it's crazy it's like all these things these things are happening and then mm-hmm. even with that situation it's like you know, I, I feel like everybody has a right to an opinion. You know, you don't right. got to believe what I believe. Um, you know what I mean? As long as we respect each other. You can have whatever belief you want. I can have whatever belief I want. But at the end yeah. of the day, as long as we respect each other. And it's like, you you can't be out here and you can't be condoning people. Like, you know, with Black Lives Matter, when they were doing protests and all the things that were happening. Right. Saying, oh, they're doing this. They're not listening to police and this and this. And then you're supporting people on your side that are doing the same thing you argued about a couple of months ago. So it's like, we got to stop, we got to stop with stuff like that. Like seriously. And we got to, it's like, we got to like learn to call things fairly. That's how I kind of look at myself as a, a independent. And I like, I, I, I call people out on both sides. I don't care right. if you're a Republican, a Democrat, whatever, 
if you're doing something wrong, wrong is wrong. But and then at the end of the day, you can't be like, hey, I represent this side, but I'm not going to tell my people when they're doing wrong. Because at the end of the day, the none of us are progressive. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just a joke at the end of the day. And it's like, it's, 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 hurting, it's hurting democracy. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. But 2021, man, all positivity, good vibes. Like you said, we leveling up this year for sure. Mm -hmm. That's what it's, it's all about. Um, yes, sir. For people who for people who want to follow you, people who want to mm -hmm. stay up to date with everything you're doing, see, uh, listen to your music, or even you know follow this new journey that you're you know hopefully taking with wrestling, how um, would they be able to connect with you on social media and follow you? I mean, first and foremost, you can Google me now because I'm everywhere now. But uh, nice, it's, nice. It's uh, Lamar Pierce, but you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter. Everything is the same. Lamar Pierce, L A R O N. P I E R C E. I'm everywhere, man. Digital outlets, as you said, that I'm on Spotify. I'm everywhere, man. Nice, definitely. I appreciate that, LeBron. You know, we we've been talking for a minute, and uh, definitely, yeah. I, I want to have you back on in the future, bro. And you know, we can yeah, keep talking, it, and man. you know, hopefully, see you know how we both progressed uh, since this time. Um, and I yeah. definitely, I just want, I want to thank you, man. I appreciate you coming on the show today. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Thank you for having me, bro. Yeah, definitely. Um, and for me, you can follow me uh, once again on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Rap and Wrestle, R-A-P-N Wrestle. Uh, definitely listen to this on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get all your streaming platforms. And um, for this episode, it's Derek, it's LeRon Pierce, and we are both out. Thank you.